So the purpose of this analysis is to determine whether the Earth shown in the Apollo 17 uh, photograph, the blue marble, corresponds to the uh, WGS-84 uh, oblate spheroid model. The method that I chose to, to make that determination is that I started by searching the latitudes and longitudes of uh, port cities in Africa and Asia. Uh, I took those latitudes and longitudes from Google Earth and Wikipedia. I know that's not necessarily a, a good source, but uh, it was uh, quick to, to get that done. I then took the latitudes and longitudes in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet and I worked out based on the, the WGS-84 methodology in the Department of Defense document uh, using the four simple equations that they have, the trigonometric, trigonometric functions, uh, and converted those, those uh, geodetic coordinates into a Earth-centered, Earth-fixed Cartesian coordinate system. I then entered, uh, by hand, I entered those coordinates into uh, AutoCAD, uh, which is a 3D uh, drafting software package. I brought those coordinates into AutoCAD and I uh, generated an isometric view with them. To confirm that that method uh, gave the right uh, results, I then took a, a cell phone photograph of a silver globe and overlaid the AutoCAD results on top of the, the photograph of the silver globe to see that if if the uh, lines of the different port cities uh, connected together would would line up correctly as they should on the uh, on the on the overlay of the AutoCAD coordinates and the uh, and the silver globe and in fact they did the equator lines up the diameter of the earth the south shore of the Mediterranean uh, Pakistan, India, Indonesia, Thailand, Australia, uh, everything lines up and checks out correctly, including uh, Antarctica. So I then took the AutoCAD uh, results and I overlaid them over uh, the photograph of the, of the blue marble. And what I found was that the diameter of the Earth lines up and the south shore of the Mediterranean lines up, the Red Sea, Pakistan, India, uh, everything in the northern hemisphere lines up. Then you look at the southern hemisphere and you find that the southwest uh, border of Africa is about 500 miles from where, where it should be. Uh, Madagascar is rotated 500 miles from, from where it should be. Uh, Antarctica seems to be ro uh, not rotated sufficiently and the entire uh, western one-third of the Australian subcontinent is not there where it should be in the photograph. So I would expect to see some some brown pixels in there where Australia should be. I would expect to see it the same color as Egypt. Uh, I would also expect to see some some brown uh, pixels where Reunion Island and Meridius are. I don't don't see anything down in there. So I'm kind of curious about all of those results. Uh, I've made the calculations available to you. You can download the files. I have the Excel file that I've that I've uh, put in there to save you a lot of work in typing and looking stuff up. Uh, the overlays uh, as well. All all that information is in there. So I can see four possibilities to explain the, the results of this uh, short analysis. I have maybe uh, 50 hours of my time wrapped into this, uh, and I don't intend to spend any more time on it. But the four possibilities are that I have made a mistake in the calculation, which is possible. I'm not a mathematician. I'm an engineer like to get to the results as quickly as possible and uh, uh, sometimes uh, mathematics is, is not my forte. 
The second possibility is that the source of information is bad, which Google Earth and or not necessarily Google Earth. I use the actual Google search functions, uh, and I used a list from Wikipedia. So I obtained all that information uh, just by searching. Uh, that information could be incorrect. The third possibility is that because the distortions appear to be mostly in the southern hemisphere, that the Earth is not oblate spheroid, but rather uh, wider in the southern hemisphere. As I hear, uh, I hear murmurings from time to time, people saying this or complaining about it. Uh, I haven't seen another mathematical uh, system put out there defining what that, uh, uh, you know, what those, what those equations are. And I would like to have that if anybody knows what they are. If you could send them to me, I'll try to, uh, I'll try to rerun this. Um, the fourth possibility is, as Matt Powerland has uh, stated, that the view is a is not a complete view of Earth, but rather a cropped view where uh, Australia, if if they're going to crop it in that manner, Aust uh, uh, Southern Africa would uh, appear to be larger, and Australia would be rotated out of view because of uh, perspective. So I, I would expect that uh, the results are are consistent with uh, with that possibility. I don't know that to be the fact. Uh, if if the if the third vision if the third version were were correct, then there would have to be some serious uh, you know, alternative. Uh, mathematical parameters in order to explain how uh, Australia would would not be visible in that picture. So uh, to summarize this, let me say that I do not believe that that this photograph uh, shows a flat Earth. I do not believe that uh, that I have sufficient strength of of an opinion that uh, that option three or option four would be the case. Uh, I just don't, just don't know. Uh, and the deviations are 500 miles. I, d I don't know how serious that is, whether that was uh, conclusive or not. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Um, and I expect that uh, in the in the very distant future, I'll make a follow up uh, to to this video when I know more information about it. I would say that I have a recommendation for people, uh, anybody who would uh, be using the photograph from Apollo 17 to firm up their belief in the in the atheist point of view, I would say that you should uh, definitely spend some time looking into this issue and uh, and seeing where it goes and where where it takes you and whether you might ought to reconsider. Um, I hope that uh, you found this video to be worth uh, 10 minutes of your time. Thanks.